Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we have created our base fragment. And now in this video, we will create the view model that we will use in our fragment to communicate with repository and then repository will communicate with our data source. So let's do it. So this is our login fragment and we already created the design for our login fragment as you can see here. Now what I will do is I will create a view model for my login fragment and registration fragment. So I will create a new class that is a Kotlin class in my auth package. So let's create a new Kotlin file class and I will name it auth view model like this. Now this class is a view model and that is why I need to extend view model to this class like this. Now our view model will communicate with our repository. So in this view model we need our repository that will hit our backend API. So now we will define the repository as our auth view models constructor parameter. So here I will write private val repository of type auth repository. Now with the help of this repository instance we can call the function login that we have inside our auth repository. Now come back to login fragment and here instead of this fragment we will extend our base fragment that we have created in the last video. So let's extend the base fragment here. So I will remove this fragment and I will write base fragment. So whenever we will extend the base fragment we need to define all the three values. The first one is our view model. So we will define auth view model here. The next one is the binding and for the login fragment we will define it as fragment login binding because our layout file name is fragment underscore login. So the view binding will generate a class named fragment login binding. Now the last parameter is our repository and for login fragment we will be using the auth repository. So we will define it here. So we have auth repository like this. We do not need to override the on create view function because we have already overridden at base fragment. So I will remove it from here. Now what we need to do is we need to override all the abstract functions of our base fragment. And to override the functions I will press alt enter in macbook it is option enter in windows system it is alt enter and then I will select implement members like this and I will implement all the three functions. So the first function will define the view model class. So here I will write auth view model class dot java for binding I will return the fragment login binding and here I will write equals to fragment login binding and then dot inflate and here we will pass the inflator the container and we do not want to attach it to parent and we have the function get fragment binding ready it is returning the actual binding. Now finally we need to return this auth repository and to create an instance of auth repository we need our api instance and to create the api instance we need the instance of our remote data source so what i will do is i will create the remote data source instance inside my base fragment only so here i will write protected val remote data source and I will create an instance of remote data source like this. Now we have the remote data source and with the help of this remote data source we can create our API instance. So let's go back to login fragment and here I will write equals to auth repository and we will use the remote data source and we will build our API 
and for auth repository we need to pass auth api as you can see here so i will pass auth api class dot java like this and we have our get fragment repository function ready so everything is fine here now what i will do is i will override the function that is on activity created like this and inside this function we will write all the logics for our fragment but we are not going to do it in this video we will do it in the next video for now we need to create our view model instance and we will do it inside our base fragment so open the base fragment and here we need to initialize the view model so let's do it we cannot directly initialize the view model because our view model contains a constructor parameter where is the view model uh, let's open our auth view model so we need to pass repository to our view model and whenever we have some constructor parameters in our view model we need to create a view model factory that will provide us the view model so i will create a single view model factory for my project that is responsible for providing all the view models so inside the base package i will create a new kotlin file and i will name it view model factory like this so let's create a class view model factory and to this class we will pass repository so we have private val repository of type base repository because we will create all our repositories with the help of this base repository only that means whenever we need to create a repository we will extend the base repository and that is why i am passing base repository as the constructor parameter to my view model factory because it is responsible for giving us all the view models that are required in our project so we have our view model factory and to create a view model factory we need to extend the class view model provider and then new instance factory like this now inside this class i will override the function that is called create and this function will create our view model so what i will do here is i will check when this model class so we have model class dot is assignable from now we will check if this model class is assignable from our specific view model or not for now we have only single view model so i will write here auth view model class dot java so if it is assignable from auth view model what i will do is i will create auth view model so here we will write auth view model and we will pass the repository but to auth view model we need to pass auth repository and that is why we will cast our repository to auth repository like this and for any other case because now we have only a single view model so for now for every other case we will throw an exception so here we will write throw illegal argument exception and we will pass the message as view model class not found like this now we need to add the return keyword here because we want to return the view model and because this create function is returning t we will cast it as t and our view model factory is ready so now we have our view model factory ready and whenever we want a new view model instance we will define it inside our when block inside this create function so what we will do we will write one more case that is model class dot is assignable from 
and our new view model class name and then we will create the view model instance here but for now we only have a single view model so that is okay now let's go to our base fragment and here we will define our view model so the first thing that we need is we need the factory instance to create our view model so we will define factory here val factory equals to view model factory and to the view model factory we need to pass our base repository that is r here and to get the actual repository we have the function that is called get fragment repository so what i will do here is i will call the function get fragment repository and it will return us the actual repository for our fragment now we have the factory and with the help of this factory we can create our view model instance so what we will do here is we will write uh, first we need to define a view model so here we will write protected late init where view model of type vm now we will initialize this view model here so we will write view model equals to view model provider and the first parameter is the owner that is this for the next parameter we need to pass our factory that we already created so here we will pass factory and finally we will call get function now inside the get function we need to define the actual view model class but we do not have it here in our base fragment so instead of the class we will call this function get view model that is giving us the actual view model class so now our base fragment is complete and what we need to do is we need to access the view model here inside our login fragment so here if i write view model i have my actual view model as you can see here i have the auth view model and with the help of this view model i can call my login api and i can perform the login but i will do it in the next video that's all for this video friends i hope you found this video helpful and learned something in case you have any problem or confusion you can leave your comments below and if you like this video then please hit on that like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with all your friends for the source code you can get it from the link that is given in the description of this video so thanks for watching everyone this is bilal khan now signing off